So, yesterday we talked a little bit about the R Corp thing, the R Corp situation and the possibility, the possibility that R Corp could be delayed. And, you know, I was, you know, I was a little surprised um, by the comments because a lot of people were kind of like, yeah, 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 we, we know that. But there was another comment and I, I missed it. I was kind of scrolling through it on my mobile and, um, you know, where I like to do most of my gaming blizzard. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was a comment saying, you know, with this one system and yet hundreds to go, hundreds more systems to be developed. And it really does bring into sharp focus the fact that, yeah, this is just one system and there are still hundreds to go. Is that automatically a terrible thing? Is that an awful thing? Is that an, oh my God, the sky is falling, reality has just set in and it's going to take a decade to finish this game? Is it that kind of a thing? Well, I'm not really quite sure that it is. Now, Star Citizen is kind of a paradox, you know. They've proven that they can build, for all intents and purposes, almost an infinite space for players to use to play the game. The problem is, is how do they fill that with content, right? I mean, certainly they can produce places like Arcorp, Hurston, Lorville, Grim Hex, Levski, even though nobody really wants to go to Levski, right? All these locations, they can build them, but how do they fill up the rest of it? How do they make use of all this space that they've created? And the truth is, is that given what they've told us and given what they've shown us, and in some cases, given what they've sold us, they don't really have to. Because the people who are probably going to fill up most of this space with that content is us. It's going to be up to us to do this. now. Oftentimes, a lot of people, you know, they kind of forget things that happened a little while ago in Star Citizen because it's always the hot new ship. It's always, you know, the new feature that's about to come out. And people tend to forget something from a year ago or two years ago or three years ago. But not that long ago, we were all talking about this ship right here. A little base building ship called the Pioneer. Well, not so little, in fact quite a big ship and what is it used for well it's used for creating and you know laying out installations on the surfaces of moons or planets or whatnot and it also happens that players can also purchase this thing called land claims now this is something that is going to be available in game obviously for in-game currency something that you can work towards but there are certain players who ponied up the dough early to get access to these land claims. And of course, we do have to, before we can make use of them, we do have to wait for this little ship here to get finished. And certainly there are going to be a lot of players who are very keenly aware that this represents a very important step in Star Citizen's future. So let's take some of what we know of what the pioneer can do real quick and then let's discuss the piratical possibilities of this information all right we know that the pioneer can build outposts we know that it can build landing pads we know that it can also build hydroponic facilities places where you can grow various crops you know and there's nothing to say that those crops have to be strictly legal crops certainly Perhaps the local authorities just simply aren't woke to the medicinal properties of something like, let's say, space weed, right? Now, you might say, well, what's, what's the guarantee that we're going to be able to make drug, you know, drug labs in the game? Well, we already know that that's a thing that you can do with the Endeavor. We already know that there are drug labs in the game right now. You can go down to Yella and you can purchase Widow or whatever and sell it wherever you want as long as you know in the future you're willing to deal with the possibility that you may run afoul of the law because they're simply not you know aware of the medicinal properties of the goods that you're trying to sell right so let's say that you have a pirate org right 
and maybe you aren't so motivated to uh, mess with other players as to just say make money on the black market in the Star Citizen game and you'd like to operate somewhat beneath the radar. You don't want to be out there stepping on other players or just trying to be flashy and get yourself caught. You want to do things kind of quiet like, kind of smart and you want to be a little bit careful. Now one of the other possibilities that they had discussed with the Pioneer and it was something that I you know, recently had to be reminded of was the fact that the Pioneer can indeed place facilities on asteroids, right? And if you look at the map of the Stanton system, there's a heck of a huge asteroid belt out just be, you know, right around where Microtech is in the system. You may have seen it when I was doing my videos where we were flying out to that location. Now think of the billions upon billions of cubic kilometers worth of space that that represents. The fact that if the Pioneer can land on an asteroid and place a facility there, you can basically create a base there. And it's not something that you have to legally claim. You can basically just squat on that land. And if there's nothing out there for players to mine, if it's an area that's particularly weak and devoid of resources, then it's probably not an area that's gonna draw a lot of attention. But you know, consequently, even on Yella, there's places that are far away from any other location. You're still dealing with millions of cubic kilometers worth of space, and it's very easy to say that you can place a facility probably in a place where very few people are ever going to happen across it. We also know that you can place defensive facilities. You can hire mercenaries to defend your location. You can even have NPCs working there as guards. These are things that we know. These are things that CIG has said that they are going to do, or at least attempt to do. So let's say that you're like a lot of pirate orcs, right? Or at least a lot of orgs that have criminal intentions, not maybe straight up piracy. But let's say that you have criminal intentions. You probably have a few members, probably have a few ships and whatnot. What if you kind of go to them with an idea and you say, oh, I know so-and-so who has a pioneer, very trustworthy guy. I'm, you know, IRL friends with him, whatever. You know, someone that in the end that you trust with a pioneer we can get him to set up a facility in a nice quiet place where there are no resources. And we can just say this is, you know, blah, 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 outpost for, you know, the Stanton Legitimate Businessman Society. And everyone's gonna say, oh, I've seen those guys flying around system. They're super nice, they're super kind, you know, they're always helpful, they always tell me where to go, blah, blah, blah. You know, oh shit, I'm trying to complete this mission. Where do I find Mancrick's wife? It's like, oh, it's just down there, you know very helpful guys but meanwhile under that veil of being super nice and super helpful you guys are setting up your own little quiet facility no one thinks all that much of it but even if they find it and you know that is your drug lab and between yourself and your closed little group of members your you know your most trusted members you have a little operation running where instead of having to go to jumper town or whatever you just bring agricultural products in from let's say you know whatever uh deacon's research facility is the one that immediately comes to mind but i know that there are others that sell agricultural byproducts or maybe nitrogen for uh fertilizer something like that you bring all that stuff into your facility and you kind of put that in your production pipeline out of the other end comes your you know your substances and then you move along and you sell them. You've now, like, you have become the middleman. You are the one who's kind of managing all that profit and you're also doing the delivery. So now you no longer have to worry about going out to a location that many other people know about where they can, you know, interfere with your ability to collect these substances and then sell them on. Now you're responsible for the entire production process from production all the way to distribution, you now control that whole process and you can profit from that whole process rather than just being one minor part of that equation. You're now the entire equation as a business working together as an org, right? That becomes, it's not so much the go out and you know hunt down this individual. It's not so much the you know, go and find this lost shipwreck or whatever, but now you're sort of creating your own content. You're creating your own story this way by opening up these doors with the ship like a pioneer. And probably in the future, we're going to see 
a smaller scale version of the Pioneer that's meant to you know, put down little starter facilities, I wouldn't be shocked if that's a ship that we see in the near future. Something that CIG can deliver sooner than the Pioneer. But you know, once again, that's a whole other conversation. But you know, with these possibilities, now you don't have to worry so much about filling up everything with content because all you really have to do is create the infrastructure, right? You just have to kind of hand people a book with blank pages and say, write your own story in this. And if, if it's suitable enough for what they want to do, they can write one heck of a story. There can be rivalries, there can be gang rivalries. Someone's putting too much into the market and it's depressing the prices and nobody's happy with that. So now they gotta have a little, a tussle over these things. But if they do it too publicly, then they risk bringing the law down on all of them, that sort of thing. All kinds of intrigue and all kinds of possibilities of the adventures and the stories that you can tell. It's it allows players to kind of become the engine that creates all the content that you need to fill up a space like this. And all CIG really has to do is build the framework that you're gonna populate with that content. Now we've barely scratched the surface of what's possible with a system like this. We've looked at one instance of something that you might do if you're a pirate or a criminal or a smuggler. But if you consider like refining, mining, you know, gas extraction, hydroponics, landing facilities, storage facilities, defensive turrets, things like that. Like we barely really scratched the surface of what's possible with a system like this and all the things that you can do for pretty much the entire spectrum of players and how they choose to play the game. I mean, if you really lean into it and you decide, well, you know what, I'm going to use the existing mission system to go and work as hard as I can, maybe as myself or as a member of my org, we kind of pool in-game money together, create kind of a fund to get our own space station and whatnot off the ground. And I mean, CIG didn't really commit to the space station idea. They kind of said, yeah, well, we'll think about it. But Beyond that, just a landing zone. I mean, if there's an area that's rich in minerals, but there's a particular piece of real estate that's got nothing on it, you put a refinery there. And if there's a lot of prospectors who get, you know, get started cutting their teeth at mining in that area, they may just sell their minerals to you that you can refine and then sell on to the open market just because you had a little extra startup capital and you were able to get that thing going right in the beginning. A lot of early miners come to this area to mine and you just happen to provide a facility that saves them fuel and saves them time of having to go to Alisar or to another base to hand those minerals in. There you go, there's a business idea. And you can build on that and you can kind of work together as a team. And once you set goals like this, I mean, it's very much like those base building games. You know, once you get a whole bunch of people working together trying to build the same idea, you realize in those games how much faster it goes when you have different people working in different branches all coming together to bring this one big idea together whereas working alone it can sometimes take a lot longer and that's really kind of what you want to get out of games like this certainly storyline missions and all that is really fun but oftentimes in a lot of mmos they're kind of a clever disguise for the fact that you're basically just grinding mobs or grinding money or whatnot Whereas with a system like this in place, you can kind of take charge of that process and you can kind of set the pace and set your own goals and you're no longer constricted to this very, you know, very structured system that the game developers want. This gives you a lot of freedom to how, do you, how you approach your gameplay and what you want to do within the game universe. And so properly implemented, especially if, let's say, the Prospector and maybe a lighter version of the Prospector, maybe even something that doesn't build outposts, but allows you to go somewhere, purchase outpost components, and basically just drop them at the location. Bring in those ships early enough with, you know, one or two star systems, and you'll have players, you know, they'll be looking at 100 star systems left to go, that sort of thing but they're gonna be so busy doing their own thing and building their own little empires that, you know what, they'll, be, they'll just be like, when that stuff comes, that's great. Another star system, cool, I'll deal with that then. But right now, I've got a lot on my plate. There's a lot of things I wanna do, so you let me know when that's done. I've got my own shit to do over here. So, it does seem like kind of a monumental problem when you first look at it. And certainly there have been times in the past where I've looked at it and gone like, Jesus, how are they ever going to get all this done? 
But if you take the right steps and you put the right things in players' hands at the right time, you can actually buy yourself a lot of time to get all of that done whilst players are busy doing their own thing. Anyways, that's the show for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.